Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit about how to do your calculations with correct significant figures because you take so much time to measure things with the correct amount of precision, not too much or not too little detail than what the tools give you. You wanna make sure that when you do calculations with those measurements, that your answers also have the correct level of precision and detail. Let's go. All right, so the main idea here is that when you take measurements, you were limited by how much precision or how much detail those measurements had to them by the measuring tool. And it was important to make those measurements and be honest about how detailed you knew that quantity to be. So it goes to reason that if you're gonna do calculations that involve those measurements, those also need to be reported with an honest amount of precision and detail. So the main idea is that any calculation that you do on measurements cannot have an answer that is more precise than the measurements that went into them. And this main idea is applied in a couple of different ways. We're going to first look at multiplication and division, which is a little bit easier, and then we'll move on to addition and subtraction, which is a little bit harder. For multiplication and division, it's that your answer has to have the same number of significant figures as the least precise measurement that went into it. And we'll look at two examples, one multiplication and one division, how this looks. And this is easy enough to do on a calculator, 3.5 times 1.28, and you get an answer of 4.48. The units, because it's multiplication, would be centimeters squared, centimeters times centimeters, centimeters squared. So we look and it says that our answer, which right now has three significant figures, needs to be rounded so that it has the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the least in the original problem. So this one has two significant figures, this one has three significant figures, so our answer should be rounded so it only has two significant figures. So instead of 4.48 centimeters squared, our correct answer should be 4.5 centimeters squared. Another example that's division. If you have a piece of an object that weighs 5.389 grams and it takes up 2.5 milliliters of space, the density of it, you would divide the grams by the number of milliliters and you would get an answer using your calculator of 2.1556. Here the units, because it's grams divided by milliliters, would be grams per milliliter. Now again, we look and we see what we need to round it to. This first figure in the calculation has four significant figures. This second measurement has only two significant figures, and so our answer needs to be rounded so that it only has two significant figures and we would have an answer of 2.2 grams per milliliter. We're gonna move on to addition and subtraction, which really isn't that hard, but people always get confused about this rule or forget this rule. So while in multiplication and division, it's really about the number of sig figs, in addition and subtraction, it's all about the place value. 
So we'll look at two examples and how they would work in real life. So this is an example where you might have a beaker, a thousand milliliter beaker, and it only has um, a known digit in the hundreds place and an estimated digit here, and the zero is a placeholder. And so the hundreds place and the tens place are significant digits. This could have been measured using a burette over that beaker. So you've got a large beaker with a large amount of water that is not very precisely measured. But then here you've got a 50 milliliter burette and you're using it to drop 2.11 milliliters into this. If you were to do this in, purpose, in person, you would notice that the level of this water does not noticeably change. And this small amount of water is not going to change this enough to change that estimated digit. And so because of that, this small amount is not going to change this because it was only precise to the tens place. Our calculator would give us an answer of 612.11 milliliters. But the rule is that we look at the place value and the one that has the least precise place value is that it needs to be rounded to the tens place. And so 612.11 rounded to the tens place would just be 600 10 milliliters. Sometimes it's easier to set these up um, vertically to picture what's going on. So we've got 610 milliliters plus 2.11 milliliters. We get our answer, 612.11 milliliters. And we draw a dotted line to show where the least precise figure was, and that kind of shows us where we need to round, that everything here needs to get dropped and possibly turned into placeholders if we need them to be. So that means this would be 610 milliliters. We'll look at an example now that is subtraction and involves small numbers. So here we can do this on a calculator or in our heads and it would tell us that the answer to this problem without any rounding would be 0 0.008 grams. But if we look, again, place value. So this one goes to the hundredths place. This measurement goes to the thousandths place. And so the one that's least precise is this one. And that means that based on place value, our answer has to be rounded to the hundredths place. And so that means taking this, but rounding it to this place value would mean that it's 0 0.01 grams. I'll set it up vertically so that you can see it visually as well. And so dropping our dotted line here, we can see that it needs to be rounded to this place. This would be cut off, but it's over five. And so it would round this up. All right, so hopefully that was clear enough. If not, we're going to get tons of practice in class. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in person.